Okay, good morning everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here and I'd like to thank the organisers for inviting me. Um, I'd like to start with some good news. Agroecology is centre stage. Um, if we look at some of the recent international landmark reports, it's clear that agroecology has become much more central in the overall policy narrative. We've had the International Assessment of Agricultural Knowledge, Science and Technology and Development, the so-called ISTD report. Then we had the UN Special Rapporteur's report on agroecology and the right to food in 2011, presented at the UN Assembly. And we've even had within the EU the work of the Standing Committee on Agricultural Research. And I'd just like to quote from the third foresight report of the EU Standing Committee on Agricultural Research. It calls for research, and I quote, to create radically new farming systems that must differ in significant respects from current mainstream production systems. And high priority should be given to approaches that integrate historical knowledge and agroecological principles. So this comes from the heart of the EU. Uh, and similarly, the ISTD advocates reducing the vulnerabilities of the global food system through locally based innovations and agroecological approaches. So agroecology, which was barely recognized five years ago, is now much more center stage in policy discourses and food and farming. And that's very good news. But there's some less good news, too. First, really two types of bad news, really. First, agroecology does remain the poor child of agricultural research. If I look at the UK, the country where I currently live, Less than 1% of the total budget for agricultural research is given to agroecological research. And if you look at overseas aid programs administered by UK aid, you have the same pattern. Very, very little attention given to agroecology. Agri it's business as, usual, business as usual, productivist farming uh, promoted in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And a similar situation prevails in many other European countries. So the development of agroecological innovations is clearly impeded, even though its importance for sustainable agriculture and adaptation to climate change has been highlighted by a number of very influential reports. The second bit of bad news, I think, is that the meaning of agroecology is contested, and this is a source of confusion for many policymakers in the EU. Agroecology basically means different things to different people. So just like words like sustainability, participation, we see in many, many meanings projected into those words. They're contested, they're reinterpreted in diff by different people in different ways. So in a nutshell, the term agroecology has been recently adopted by some actors for different purposes, broadly speaking, either to conform to the dominant agri-food agri regime or to transform it. And I think the developments in France are particularly noteworthy in this regard. Stéphane Lafaux, the Minister of Agriculture, has ambitions for France to become the champion of agroecology in Europe, and I quote. It's a declaration made in 2012. And the French National Research Institute has introduced agroecology in its strategic plan for the next 10 years. But it's business as usual research. Uh, what's striking is that for civil society groups and farmer networks in France, the government's definition of agroecology is very different to what they are hoping for. Civil society and farmer networks argue for um, agrarian reform that favors a diversified organic agriculture on a human scale. And for them, agroecology is synonymous with greater producer-consumer proximity, employment creation, solidarity economy, and diverse food products for citizens. So there are two implications here for governments in, in Europe. One, governments clearly need to significantly increase public spending on agroecological research, and also reflecting that in their overseas aid programs. But it's not the same style of research as before. It's not the business as usual top-down transfer of technology and model of research that's required. We need a much more transformative approach to agroecological research. Um, one that's very different from conventional top-down transfer of technology models. And that's what I really want to highlight next. Um, basically, if we situate ourselves in a transformative scenario for agroecology to live up to its 
its um, expectations and, and potential. Um, I think there's a two-pronged approach that can be envisaged by progressive policymakers and civil society and social movements. One is democratizing science, technology, and, um, and research, whilst increasing public funding. And that basically means ensuring that citizens, farmers, have a great deal more oversight over the directions, the priorities, the governance of agricultural research. Um, and there are a number of methodologies, there are a number of institutional innovations that can put citizens at the center of the governance of research. Um, deliberative methods, citizen jurists, scenario works, there's a raft of institutional and methodological innovations that can really help bring in the views of citizens center stage in research. It also requires fundamental changes in the current organization of research and its culture. Um, it also means important professional reorientation and new training for researchers so that they can engage in more participatory processes, more co-inquiry with farmers and small food processes. It entails very different reward and incentives within research organizations and different operational procedures so that public research can really become responsive and deliver um, um, a, a, a project of agroecological intensification. Um, the second um, aspect, and it's the second prong of this is approach, which Stefan's already alluded to, is really the deinstitutionalization of research for autonomous learning and action through horizontal networks. Many of you have probably heard of the Campesino or Campesino movement, the farmer to farmer movement of research and innovation. And they demonstrate a much broader principle at work in a society. There is a lot of self-organized research that is off the radar stream of a lot of official thinking about research. And yet these, these, <coughs> these um, um, initiatives are very, very um, innovative, productive. Um, the open source community developing non-proprietary software and internet programs, involvement of amateur naturalists, and gardeners in national surveys of biodiversity and relationships with climate change. There's a lot of self-organized research, and we need to strengthen um, these horizontal networks for autonomous learning and action. And there are real opportunities to enhance the possibility of constructing very different ways of knowing that are distributed and self-managed social activities under the democratic control of farmers and citizens. This is crucial when we look for more adapted solutions to a variety of contexts, that the research is decentralized in that way, and that networks of citizens and users of the products of research are much more empowered in the production, the co-validation of knowledge, and the extension of innovations. Two minutes, okay. Now, these are two important prongs. It's not either or, they're complementary. Um, and but both of them, I think, have to be characterized by much more power, power equalizing forms of research in which uh, farmers and people who are not trained to do research in university assume much bigger roles in the production and validation of knowledge. Um, and this would apply at every level in the research cycle, not end of the pipe production of technologies, right? Uh, participatory technology development, but much, much more an upstream definition of strategic research priorities for society, the definition of um, um, monetary allocations, um, the framing of uh, science and agriculture development policy, and then the research process itself, where they, people are much more involved in, as co-inquirers and co-constructors of knowledge. Um, this is really important, that the, what the French call the métier des chercheurs, that the, the, the profession of researchers changes, so that these power equalizing processes are embedded in either one or both of these approaches to the democratization of research. Um, I'd like to end by saying that these sorts of approaches, and there is evidence for this already, What's striking is that these ways of knowing, these ways of co-producing knowledge, 
in ways that elicit and make use of much greater collective intelligence, the, the intelligence of farmers, scientists, indigenous people, pastorals, food workers, etc., actually does generate a very different type of knowledge. And what's interesting for agroecology is that it's very likely that this, this innovation process, these uh, bottom-up uh, processes of um, agroecological research are likely to, to generate the kinds of technologies, the kinds of institutions that are needed to address some of the current challenges that have been alluded to this morning. Not just agro new agroecological models of production that are adapted to place and respond and adapt to climate change, but also at a lower level, evolutionary plant breeding that brings back diversity in the field, uh, the phenomenal label and builds the resilience of cropping systems and, and livestock, but also at a higher scale, investments into um, eco-literacy, eco-design that might be more applicable to uh, larger areas, so applying the principles of agroecology to rural areas but also urban areas, uh, circular economy models that tie together food and water, food and energy production with water and waste management, and we heard uh, an example of this from um, Jyoti this morning, but also a better understanding of the science of dynamic complexity at a time when there's huge uncertainty. We really need to bring together the partial and incomplete knowledge of many, many players uh, to come up with knowledge that can help us deal with uncertainty, unpredictability. Ditto, it doesn't just apply to the natural science, it also applies to the social science and particular economics. The potential that these approaches can have for rethinking economics for broadening our understanding of economics to move away from just markets defined as money-based markets to other forms of economic exchange based on reciprocity, barter, gift, solidarity. In other words, we're moving the rich tradition of economic philosophy that somehow has been lost in the last 70 years. That will be necessary as one tries to construct agroecologies um, that um, promote sustainable food systems in both urban and rural spaces around the world. I'll stop because I overshot by one minute. Thank you for the extra time. Thank you. Thank you.